very great section, I made two points. One, we should not continue with uh, double antiplatelet treatment for more than six months. And two, we should uh, really use the new generation of drug gluten stents in order to reduce the stent thrombosis. During this third hotline session, Marco Valgimili presented the Prodigy study, conducted in three centres in which more than 2,000 patients scheduled for PCI were randomly assigned 30 days after stent implantation to either 6 or 24 months of dual antiplatelet therapy. The primary point, which was again uh, all cause death MI and CVA, was almost identical in the two study groups. 10% in one group, 10.1% in the other. In respect to the bleeding, we did see differences because the key safety endpoint, which was again BARC 5, 3 and 2, was more than two times higher in a highly significant manner in patients who kept on Clopidogo for 24 months with respect to the short duration of treatment. Our study can lead us to a very simple conclusion that discontinuation of Clopidogo after six months is safe in patients, probably even safer than prolonging Clopidogo for more than six months. At this third ESC 2011 hotline, Lorenz Reber presented the results of the Bern Rotterdam cohort, a study that's compared the safety and rate of late stent thrombosis of the unrestricted use of the Everolima eluting stent compared with earlier generation Sirolimus and Paclitaxel eluting stents in a population of 12,339 consecutively enrolled patients. The benefit in terms of everolimusolutine stent was mainly pronounced uh, during the uh, late time period that is uh, beyond one year with a significant relative risk reduction of 67% uh, in favor of everolimusolutine stent as compared to serolimusolutine stent and resulting in a significant risk reduction of 76% uh, in favor of the Everolimus as compared to the Paclitaxel uh, eluting stent. The results with the newer stents, the newer generation stents appear to be excellent, both in terms of efficacy and safety, and they translate into clinical outcome, into superior clinical outcomes. And I think that is a stark contrast with what was seen a few years ago at the ESC 2006, where there were a lot of concerns with the first generation drug eluting stents. At one of the two clinical trial update sessions, Jean-Claude Tardif presented the echocardiography analysis conducted on 611 patients in the SHIFT study. SHIFT was reported as an ESC 2010 hotline session by Michel Kamajda. The study included 6,500 patients with moderate to severe heart failure with heart rates of 70 beats per minute or more and already receiving optimal recommended therapy. They received either evabridine or placebo and the study has demonstrated that adding evabrodine led to a significant 18% reduction in cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure. The results I think are, are, are really uh, pretty spectacular. Uh, there were significant reductions in ventricular vo uh, volumes, improvement in ejection fraction, and this was over and above what you get a bit with a beta blocker and a RAS inhibitor. But we were actually able to link the uh, magnitude of LV dysfunction as defined by echocardiography with future outcomes. So, so there are very, there's a very nice story between the magnitude of LV dysfunction, clinical outcomes, and then the improvement of LV function and volumes and improvement in clinical outcomes. 
for the first time, the ESC has developed specific guidelines on dyslipidemias jointly with the European Atherosclerosis Society. Zelko Reiner, who chaired this new document, shared some of their key messages for clinical practice with us. I would say uh, first LDL cholesterol is the main target and has to be uh, uh, treated properly. What is new, uh, we have introduced score tables uh, uh, which are taking into consideration HDL cholesterol. We uh, introduced uh, uh, four steps of risk, I would say. And another important issue in this uh, guidelines is combined therapy. Paris 2011 has been a great success, both in terms of number of delegates, because we have broken, as expected, the records for the ESC with more than 33,000 delegates coming from 150 countries. It's really a global meeting on cardiovascular diseases, and at the moment, it is the largest meeting in the world. But it was also a success in terms of quality and we heard exciting results about major registries whether in Europe or global and also very interesting hotlines with new clinical trials so it was an outstanding meeting but we have to look towards the future and the future is the annual meeting of the ESC in 2012 and as you may know we will welcome you in the city of Munich in Germany and the spotlight of 2012 is from bench to bedside. So I look forward to welcoming all of you in Munich.